I'm gonna be using chuck roast in this video, but this is not a smoked chuck roast tutorial. I do have a video on the channel showing you how to do a chuck roast, but if you're new, I recommend using ground beef. And I'll point you to a video at the end of this one that is a really, really good tutorial on how to smoke some ground beef on the grill. Let's get into this. I'm not gonna be doing anything with this chucky until it reaches at least 165 degrees. At that point, I'm gonna wrap it and put it back out there to finish. So I really don't need to do any of the other prep until my chucky is at least at that stage. So I'm gonna chill out, man. So I got my Chucky inside right now, and what I'm going to do right now is create a little braise to help this Chucky push past the stall and make sure that it's very, very tender because that's what we need it to be for these enchiladas. I got this beef bone broth here that my wife bought. So what I'm gonna do is fill this pan up to about halfway up this Chucky. I'm gonna chop up some onions, Put that in there, maybe a couple of tomatoes or something like that, just to give this broth some flavor. But it's all about creating a steamy environment inside of this pan that really breaks that meat down and gives it some flavor while that's happening. Just want to get a look at it, and then I'm going to close it back up. It is time to start working on the sauce, and I want to shout out right here, the big homie Sal. Me and him got tight because we started in the uh, started our channels right around the same time. He does all of the traditional stuff you expect to see on a barbecue channel, but where he really, really shines is doing the Mexican dishes and stuff like that. He makes his enchilada sauce from scratch. I ain't trying to do that. So just tell me which is the best store-bought brand. And he mentioned, among others, this one right here, Las Palamas. Hope I'm saying that right. But he gave me some other tips to kind of take this to the next level. He told me to get some tomatoes and, and uh, mash them up, get some onions, stuff like that and pour that in there, get some oregano. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so according to my buddy Sal, the next step with these uh, onions and tomatoes is to saute them, blend them, and strain them. Now sauteing I can do, but I don't have a blender and I don't have a strainer. Uh, if you've been following along with us, you know, man, we had a fire at our house, so we're not living at home. We're in a rental, it's a nice rental but we don't have all the things that we normally have access to at home. So I gotta make do, man, but we'll make it work.
this is my enchilada sauce, and as you can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty runny right now. The easiest way to thicken up any kind of sauce liquid is with a slurry. So I'm waiting on my enchilada sauce to warm up right now. But while it's warming up, I'm gonna go ahead and get one tablespoon of cornstarch. And I'm gonna go over here to the sink and get one tablespoon of water. Then I'll just mix this up until it's thoroughly combined. Seems warm enough, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this in here, and I'm going to continually stir it the whole time. Then I'll just continue to stir. In the past, I've had to do this more than once just to get the consistency I need. So I guess it depends on the volume of what you're trying to uh, thicken. If you find that it's not thick enough after you do it one time, just do the same thing again. Same, same ratio, one to one. So I'll go ahead and let this cool off and we should be good to go. Whatever the liquid is, it needs to be warm before you do this. Don't pour your cornstarch slurry into a cold liquid. Also, don't put cornstarch directly into a, uh, a liquid. Whatever it is, whatever is a sauce or a soup or whatever you're trying to thicken, don't just put some cornstarch directly into it. It'll clump up and ruin your dish. So I'm gonna let that sit for a while, cool off a little bit, and then we'll come back and build them out. We're at the point in this recipe where it's time to start preparing the flour tortillas. Now, because they are made of flour, we can't just dump them in this sauce like they are, or they're gonna be mushy and that won't be good. So we gotta do something to shore them up, you know, but they still have to remain pliable. So we can't, we can't just fry them, but or they won't bend. So what I've seen a couple of people do is uh, they'll, they'll have a pan of hot oil. They'll dip them in there for like three seconds or something like that, and they'll take them out and they're still pliable so they can they can get folded up and everything i decided to try putting them on the grill and it actually worked out pretty good check it out What I'm doing here is just standing over the grill and watching them and flipping them. I'm putting them directly over the fire. And what I'm looking for is color changes, little bubbles or something like that, that tells me that they're getting there. But I'm also making sure that they stay pliable. This actually worked out great, to tell you the truth. time for the final step putting together these enchiladas I got about 10 of them to make and what I'm going to do is just make an assembly line right here you see my tortillas at the top of the line they'll get dunked on both sides into the sauce they'll come over to the next phase and get some meat so 
some good old smoked chuck and then down here at the bottom and i gotta apologize man i didn't realize my shot was cut off there but uh we'll be rolling them and putting them in that pan with the fold on the bottom <laughs> 